All right, so what we're going to deal with tonight is the sixth and the final step of the relational database design. Woo. Finally, it's coming to an end, yes. Wow. But before we do that, let's have a review of what we've done so far. And once again, I will tie it into the, uh, the framework, the development framework. So, let's have a look at the different steps. Step one is, that's, that's right. Sorry? Entities. Entities. Oh, uh, step one, go on the Very website good. and review all the YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Entities I and? Uh, attributes. My friend has the best idea. I need a book. Entities and attributes. You discover the entities and for each entity, you also list the attributes for those entities. Secondly, second step. Relationships. Relationships. You derive the relationships between the entities. And how do we do that? With the matrix, that is correct. We use the entity entity matrix to derive all of the relationships. Third. Which one? Be more specific. Simplify. Simplify. I need a book. <laughs> The simple ER diagram. And that diagram just has the entities and the relationships. It doesn't have anything else on it. Next up. List assertions for the relationships. And those assertions are derived from the simplified diagram. And the last thing we did was. Create the detailed ER diagram using the assertions and the simplified ER diagram. And the detailed ER diagram contains things like optionality and cardinality. What is optionality? Optionality can, whether you can or must, says whether some whether a part of a relationship is optional, and the cardinality says. How many, how many, right, it says how many uh, relations uh, are in the, how many, it says how many entity, how many entities are in the uh, relationship. I know. <laughs> and last but not least, what we will be dealing with this evening or starting this evening is the crow's foot diagram. And the crow's foot diagram is what we call a relational model diagram. So I can be more specific and say RM diagram. The crow's foot relational model diagram. And this diagram here is what you use to create the database. Any relational database management system, you should be able to take the crow's foot relational model diagram and create the database straight away from there. So we're almost done. We finished with this. 
And it's just really to transform this ER diagram into the Crossford diagram. And that's going to be the focus of what we're going to look at. Now, in terms of the software development life cycle, it's important to know where these fit in. And it's really uh, quite simple. What are the steps in the PDLC or SDLC? Analysis. <laughs> yeah, but uh, <coughs> design, 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 implementation, implementation. It was at the start of the class, not that long ago. Now, for analysis, the product that you get here is the ER diagram. For design, the product is the RM diagram. For the implementation, it's the relational database. <clears throat> and maintenance, all you really do is maintain the database. So basically, the first five steps is just part of the analysis. The next step is part of the design, and what we will do after is take that design and implement the design to create a relational database. Now, there are some important distinctions between the two in that the ER diagram is the user's view, and it's also what we call a conceptual model. The relational model diagram is the uh, is the developer's view, and that is what we call the implementation model, because this is what you're going to implement. Remember that I said this here, the ER diagram, has to do with the user and how the user or the client sees their data, and you spend a lot of time going back and forth with the client. After you've finished this stage here, there's no going back to the client. The only time you go back to the client is if you've made a mistake or they said they want to add on something else. And we refer to that as scope creep, and you need to be aware of that. So after this stage, you do not go back to verify anything with the client. That is why you move from the analysis stage to the design stage. Because you've completed analyzing the problem. And it's time to get down to designing it and building the database. And after you finish that, you go on to actually implement the database from there. Questions?